John. You like to be with Jesus. Okay. Now, Jesus is a person to be with. Okay. Jesus is a delightful person to be with. How do we know that? Okay. Now, I learned this first from a writer called Max Lucado. Now, why was Jesus invited to the Cana wedding, which is recorded in the book of John? Why? Why? No. Okay. Uh, my wife knows the answer. Probably they, they suspected that he would be of great help to the catering department because he is a miracle worker. Was Jesus invited because he was a celebrity? Celebrity like, uh, okay, uh, Pranam Mukherjee or Shah Rukh Khan or Katrina Kaif. Uh, he wasn't a celebrity. Okay, the invitation was not motivated by his miracles. He had not performed any miracle at that time. Okay, why did they invite him? Max Lucada says, I suppose they liked him. Okay, you know, in fact, the, when the bride and the groom, they sat down and uh, decided whom they had to invite, they somebody said, Jesus' name had to be there. And one possible reason is, I mean, this is, uh, this is a little bit of guesswork is there, but going by how Jesus lived his life, okay, he is fun to be with because he was not, he is nice to be with. He is good to be with. He is fun to be with. So now, okay, that's one reason. Uh, and uh, Max Lucera says, as a result, okay, people, uh, let me read some uh, a paragraph here. Uh, okay, Jesus was, wasn't invited because he was a celebrity. He wasn't one yet. The invitation was not motivated by his miracles. He is yet to perform any. Why did they invite him? I suppose they liked him. Big deal? I think so. It's significant that the common folk in a little town enjoyed being with Jesus. They enjoyed being with Jesus. You know, who would you invite for a wedding? Somebody who uh, you don't like? I'm, in fact, uh, if people don't like you, they don't invite you for, for the wedding. They make it a point not to invite you for the wedding. Okay? Yeah, my, my wife is laughing. Okay. <laughs> because it has happened to us. <laughs> okay. uh, see, but they like Jesus, and that's why they, and, and then it's, and John Max Lucera says, it's not worthy, the Almighty, who's Jesus? Almighty God. The Almighty didn't act high and mighty. Jesus was the Holy One, but He was not holier than thou. Yesterday I was in some place, and uh, a lot of women were there, and, and suddenly a cross fell on me, and then they said, okay, uh, uh, and then the cross fell on Pastor Duke, in fact, I'm not a pastor. Then I and I my immediate response is I'm not that spiritual <laughs> for a cross to fall fall off me from and I, I am not a magnet to attract all the crosses in a room. I I hope not. I I want to be known as a person who is fun to be with. So I'm making it a point deliberately, making it a point deliberately, uh, much to the anger of my wife because I'm going from one extreme to another extreme. Whenever we're eating together as a family. I am making sure my kids laugh till their stomach hurts. I am deliberately doing it. Poking fun, making some joke or the other. I am inspired by Jesus of John chapter 2. Okay. J. Okay. Okay. What do you say? I like it. Okay. J. D. I. D. I. Okay. D. I. Incarnation presenting book of John. Okay. Now, I want you to read John 1 14. John 1 14. Incarnation presenting book of John. This is exclusive John. Okay. It's not there. It's like, you know, you. Okay. The word became a human being. He made his home with us. He made his home with us. We have seen his glory. It is, it is the glory of the one only and only son. He came from the Father and he was full of grace and truth. Okay, please sing the song. Word of the Father, now in flesh, appearing. That's where, you know, the, the hymn writer got his idea from John 1.14. Okay, Matthew's gospel went up to Abraham. It was written for Jews. And who is the father of the uh, Jewish race? Abraham. Okay, in the genealogy in chapter 1. Then Luke's gospel was for the, for, for the, for the entire world, in fact, especially the non-Jews. So Luke went up to Adam in the, in the genealogy. Adam is the first man, so Jesus was for everybody. So Luke's gospel had Adam in the genealogy. Okay, Mark uh, Mark doesn't even have a genealogy. Mark begins with the ministry of Jesus, the baptism of Jesus. Okay, now John, 
goes just one step, one step further. He says Jesus is actually God who existed eternally. Long before even Adam was created. And the word became flesh. Word became flesh. In fact, the actual literal translation is the word became a tabernacle. Jesus became a moving tabernacle. Tabernacled among us. That's an actual translation. He became a moving tabernacle. Now, I thank God for the, uh, the big church projects that goes on, church building projects uh, that goes on in our, in our city. We need lots of buildings. In fact, I used to live in Delhi. One of the complaints I had, one of the things that felt, made me feel sad is when I walked in Delhi, we didn't have I, no big church buildings in Delhi. There are a few, but not as the big church buildings I saw in Chennai. And we have a lot of churches in in uh, in uh, in Hyderabad. Uh, we have SPG just kissing the second of our railway station. We need to have a lot of wonderful, we need to have big buildings, uh, big church buildings for us to worship in. But we should not forget the fact but Jesus is the moving church, a moving tabernacle, the ultimate tabernacle. Okay. All right. Now, so that is incarnation. J D I. Then what's the next word? S. S. Okay. S. S. Several Samaritans challenge presenting Book of John. Several Samaritans. Now, what? What the book of John is teaching us is, I told you the Samaritan account is only there in the book of John. And which chapter do we read in? John 4. Okay, welcome. Now John 4, uh, uh, Jesus encountered the Samaritan woman, okay. You know the story of Samaritan woman, okay. Uh, she's, a, she's a typical uh, young woman who worked in a, maybe a, a company like Infosys, okay. We just had a person. Uh, typical, you know, uh, with all the in, in fact recently in Hyderabad you know there was a techie working in Infosys who committed suicide and then the question was and then, then they found out uh, the problem was related to her marriage which was not working out and if she drank the water of marriage then the thirst would be quenched so many people you know many single people and many young people think marriage is a solution to all the life problems that's what this woman thought. She got into marriage number one, it didn't work. It starting. Okay, and then uh, uh, marriage number two, marriage number two also did not work out. Marriage number three, marriage number three also did not work out. She thought she's having a thirst. She thought she'll drink the water of marriage, that thirst will be quenched. And ultimately, like some of the celebrities, modern celebrities like uh, uh, like Rahul, uh, of course, Rahul Gandhi has a... Uh, Saif Ali Khan for many years and then Salman Khan uh, then Rahul Gandhi okay many of them they don't think highly of the of the institutional marriage okay maybe Rahul Gandhi no Rahul Gandhi says she wants to stay single to to serve the country okay uh, so that's what he says but some of these movie stars uh, then we have the Hollywood actresses like uh, Halle Berry and all who was married at one point in time and she said I'm not at one point in time, she said, I don't believe in institutional marriage. Now, we have then, like, this woman got into the, when she came to the sixth uh, relationship, she didn't even believe in marriage. At that time, she was living in with a man, so she had sex. So, she at that point, she said, let, uh, let me drink the water of sex. Then that will quench the thirst in my soul. And then that's when Jesus offered her living water, which was actually him, his person. A living relationship with the living water, Jesus, will quench every emptiness in your soul. That's how you share the gospel with your friend when you're having coffee with them in, the, in, in your corporate company. You know, you, they can try X, Y, Z. You can, buy, you, can, you can earn a lot of money. You can walk into the Samsung store and buy the latest Samsung digital TV worth uh, one and a half lakhs and put it on in, in your house. You can buy a Benz card. You can do, you can go for vacations. You know, uh, you know, you can do all, n number of things. At the end of it, you'll still be hungry. You'll still be thirsty. You'll still be searching if you don't have a living relationship with Jesus Christ. And in John 14, 14. Shall we read John 14, 14? John 14, 14. John 4, 14. Sorry, 4, 14. 4, 14. John 4, 14 is a powerful scripture. 
Jesus says, whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst again. Which means, without Jesus, you have anything, your life will still be a vacuum. Only an emptiness inside your life. And uh, having and, and following the story, what do we read in verse 35? What do we read in verse 35? Chapter 4, verse 35. Um, do you think the work of harvesting will not begin? Yeah. Will not begin until the summer ends? Jesus says, from now? do not wait for four more months yes. and then I'll begin to harvest. No, Look when Jesus is talking you. to the Samaritan woman, his disciples were not there. They had gone somewhere and then they come and then he starts to preach to them. They were surprised that he was talking to a woman and he tells them, don't say four more months and then the harvest. Open your eyes and see the fields are ripe for harvest. In fact, John's deliberate style is he uses pictorial images. When, for example, in John chapter 9, there's a man who's born blind healed and then Jesus talks about the Pharisees who had eyes but they were blind. So when Jesus says, look at the fields, they're ripe for harvest, He's saying, look at, the, look, at the, look at the world around. There are many Samaritan women. There are many Samaritan women. All across, just like this woman I just talked to. They have X, Y, Z, but they are not happy. They are still thirsty. They are still searching. They need to come to me. They need to have a relationship with me. I will give them, you know, the, what, that, what is missing in their life. Only I can provide. So, so D-I-S... Several C. Samaritans. Okay, D I. C. D I S. Okay, now the next one. So, S talks, talks about several Samaritans. Okay, there are several Samaritan women in our world. Okay, now, okay, D I S. C, pa. C, okay. Now, okay, chorus, chorus encouraging book of John. What is this chorus? Now, shall we read? Uh, uh, shall we read John chapter eleven, verse one, and John chapter twelve, verse one? Chorus encouraging or worship encouraging book of John. Chorus encouraging. John one, eleven one, and twelve one. Okay. Okay. Bethany. Bethany. Lazarus was sick. The village where Mary and her sister Martha lived. Okay. There is one home that Jesus frequented. Whose home was that? Home of Lazarus, Martha, Mary. Okay, and what is verse 1? Verse, no, 11 1. 11 1 once again. No, I want you to read it again. Okay, a man named Lazarus was sick. Okay. He was from Bethany, the village where Mary and her sister Martha lived. Okay, that's it. Do you remember Mary who poured the costly perfume on Jesus? Do you remember the Mary who did what? Costly perfume on Jesus' feet. Who poured the costly perfume on Jesus' feet. Okay, then go to chapter 12, verse 1. Chapter Six 12. days before the Passover ceremonies began, okay. Jesus arrived in Bethany where Lazarus, the man, he had brought back to life. Okay. A banquet was prepared in Jesus' honor. Yes. Martha served and Lazarus sat at the table with him. Okay. Then Mary took a jar of costly, Mary took a jar, costly perfume, costly perfume okay. essence of nard and okay. anointed Jesus' feet with it okay. and wiped them with her hair and the house was filled with fragrance. Okay, two times in a, you know, John makes it a point to talk about this act of Mary. What did she do? She, the most expensive perfume brand, okay. It's like, you know, you walk into lifestyle and there's a, you know, there's a section just selling perfumes and it's there in all a big shopping stores and shopping malls okay uh, shopper stop a lifestyle and, and you know, all these big brands are there it's like she walked into one of the uh, a store like that bought a, one of those costly ointments and then when jesus came home she broke it at jesus feet and wiped uh, his feet with her hair you know uh, i know how much women love their hair and to, to wipe, use that part of her body which she, I'm sure she loved, to wipe the feet of Jesus was an extraordinarily creative, outrageous act of worship. And singing a, a chorus to Jesus. And that uh, was, and who did not like that? And then he said, why this waste? Money. money and he said we could have given this money for poor. poor. Now I want to tell you something. 
you must be very careful. You know, we have different ministries in Christendom, and there are those who say that uh, they say, "What? Why do you have to go to church? Or why do you have to get up in the morning and just worship Jesus? What do you get out of it? Instead of that, you can stop all that and go to the highways and byways and identify poor people and serve them. That is worship." Yes, you know, in fact, I will. I can show you a verse from um, Jeremiah's gospel, which, which actually, uh, uh, you know, talks about this, that service to poor, service to the deprived is actually worship to God. But at the same time, the scripture also says, just being in God's presence and lavishly giving God what we have and worshiping him is also something that God loves. God just loves that. So I, I want to encourage you, get up in the morning. Okay, Mary, okay, Mary gave the perfume. I think we can at least give our sleep to the Lord. So cut off some sleep, get up in the morning, spend some just singing praises. You can play the guitar. Play the guitar and sing a few worship songs. Uh, maybe you can uh, you know, get onto your uh, music application, your iPhone or Android phone, play some worship songs and you know, sing along. Do whatever. Worship God. So, in fact, uh, so what Jesus here is saying is, yes, we must serve the poor. Okay, we must do Mother Teresa-like activities. But at the same time, that does not, you know, uh, there's nothing can replace worship of the name of Jesus. Nothing can replace that. Okay, nothing can replace singing chorus of Jesus. Okay, then the word I. The I am statement recording book of John. Disciple, D-I-S-C-I. I am statement recording book of John. In fact, uh, seven I am statements are there. I just want to repeat it. I want to read that to you quickly. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger. John 6.35 I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness but have this light of light. John 8.12 Okay. Now, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life for the sheep. John 10.11 Okay, John, then the next I am statement. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to Father except through me. Then I am the true Father is the wine dresser. Okay, so many I am statements. I can you know, preach an entire sermon on each I am statement. I, want, I don't want to do that. Okay, I am the bread of life. Which means what Jesus is saying is, uh, somebody said, if you if you give food to all the hungry people in the world, the world's problems will be solved. Jesus says, no, you can give food to all the hungry people in the world, the world's problem will not have solved because there is another kind of hunger in the in the human body. One only one kind of hunger will be satisfied by food. There's another hunger which only Jesus can satisfy. Okay, light. Okay, Jesus is the light. So, in fact, Psalm 36 verse 9, Psalm 36 verse 9 uh, uh, says, In your light we see the light. So, Jesus is the light through which we see light. So, Jesus is the light through which we evaluate everything. In other words, the words of Jesus is the must have the final say in everything we do in life. Whether we choose life partner or career or which city we want to live in. What does Jesus say? Okay. All right. Then I am the gate. If anyone enters through me, he shall be saved. Uh, okay. And then it, this talks about the only name. In fact, uh, some people say, okay, uh, why do you have to say God's, uh, the only true God's name is Jesus? You can put X, Y, Z. No problem. But you know what? It says, yeah, I am the gate. If anyone enters through me, he, through me, Jesus, he shall be saved. And he will find pasture. So, and then this is very similar to Acts 4.12, where, where the Bible teaches only the name of Jesus saves. So, there is only one door for salvation. On that door, we don't have X, Y or Z. Or you name that God man, name that celebrity, name that famous guy. You can put anybody's name. No. all the, the, You cannot put anybody's name there. On the, door, on the only door to salvation, there is only one name there. What's that name? Jesus. Okay. And then I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. In fact, uh, in Ezekiel 34th chapter, the, the prophet talks about the messianic shepherd who will actually give his life for the sheep. And Jesus actually says, I am that messianic shepherd. 
I'm going to die. I'm willing to. I'm willing to die. Now, th this is a very important I am statement because it talks about the cross, which is also one of the major themes of John's gospel. And in fact, John's gospel we read uh, Jesus introduced uh, as the Lamb of God for the first time, or the in a major way. John chapter one. John the Baptist looks at Jesus and says, "Here comes the Lamb of God." Who takes away the sin of the world, and that is that truth is emphasized in various ways. And this is one way Jesus emphasizes: "I'm the good shepherd who came to give my life for the sheep." Okay, I can keep going on, but I want to stop here. I want to go to the next one. Okay, uh, what's the next letter? P. P. Okay. P. Okay. Now Passover. Three Passovers talking about Book of John. I already mentioned this in my introduction. So in the Book of John, in the second chapter. In the sixth chapter and also in the eleventh chapter, okay, three, three, these three chapters, G Jesus, the three Passovers are mentioned, and Jesus takes part in the Passover. Now, now let me uh, in one Passover. Now, for lack of time, we won't uh, we won't read that. I think it's the second Passover. So, you know, uh, in the seventh chapter, Jesus says, I think in the seventh chapter, shall we read John seven thirty nine? Uh, it's not the Passover. It's it's actually the tabernacle, another another Jewish feast. Okay, and the on the last day of the Jewish feast, Jesus said, said that. Okay. He meant the Holy Spirit. Those verse thirty-seven onwards. Verse thirty-seven onwards. On the yeah. last day, the climax. On the last day, okay. This Jewish feast ran for several days. The climax and, of the holidays. And uh, Jewish people from all over the world would come to take part. And on the last day, what did Jesus say? He stood up. And. Uh, and. And shouted. In fact, if you read uh, Matthew's gospel, the beginning, uh, the Matthew five, Jesus sat down and began to teach. That is usual style. Maybe that's one way, one reason why I sit and do that. Sit and teach. In fact, uh, but I can run. Okay, I can really run. Okay, I can run and preach. I like to do that. I sometimes I run so fast and preach I can't cross thirty. Some messages and all I can't cross forty minutes because I am exhausted by that time. But this is also a good style, especially when you want to really study the word of God for one and of us. And we have an acronym, disciple, loved by, loved by Jesus. Okay, this is good to sit and talk. But here, Jesus in John chapter 7, stands up and shouts. You know, sometimes I, some, some people get put off by my shouting. But I think, I believe when I shout, I also I copy Jesus. And I sit down and I copy Jesus. I stand up and shout also, I copy Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he said, "If anyone is thirsty, let me let them come to me and drink." In fact, uh, uh, this this particular Jewish feast uh, was a was a uh, was celebrated at a time when water was really scarce in Jerusalem. So the priest would take uh, water and actually pour it in the in the in the in the in, the, in one in the sanctuary. Okay, so all these were symbolic. And then Jesus said, "Okay, if you want water." You need to come to me and drink. In fact, John chapter 4, he, he uses imagery. In fact, John is a spiritual gospel. Jesus uses imageries to drive home spiritual lessons. Okay. Now, uh, so so three part, So Jesus takes part only. What I want you to remember is Jesus takes part in a number of Jewish festivals in around Jerusalem, in and around Jerusalem. And he will go to that festival. He will identify what are some what is the main thing about that festival and then he will connect it with this his personhood and he will come to the point where, where he claims to be god or the only the, uh, or the only answer to the, the to the needs of the human race that's how he did it okay that is in summary what he did okay what's the next letter what's the next letter l okay okay long prayer or discourse recording book of john long prayer john 17 Okay, John 17 is a high priestly prayer of Jesus. In fact, it's one prayer which is worth memorizing. It's one prayer which is worth memorizing. And in that prayer, okay, look at verse 11 and verse 25. I will not remain. No, no, just, just look at verse 11 and verse 25. Don't read it. There's an interesting name for God the Father. O what righteous is, Father. What is it? O righteous Father. Righteous Father. Now, I remember a particular... Uh, scene from the movie Indian. Okay, uh, it's actually a movie on uh, corruption, a movie against corruption, where it talks about a, a, a man called Senapati who did not even spare his own son 
who was corrupt and he was a freedom fighter. So that here was a Senapati was a righteous father. Even if his son, it was even if it was son who did corruption, the, the, he was about he was actually ready to kill him. I think he killed him. He kills him. So holy. When we say father, we think of uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe you maybe if you've been to my house frequently, then father. Okay, a, a person who loves. Okay, okay, a person who just you know, uh, okay, duke the father. He just takes Tatasha in his hands and, and he kisses her and he and his nose is on his on her hair and he cuddles her. Okay, all those images are fine. Loving father, but the loving father is also a righteous father. If, if this love, if the father's love for you is real, if you're not a bastard or born to some other father, then he will be a righteous father. If, the, if your father is a real father, he will not only be a loving father, but a righteous father. So that's how Jesus addresses his father. Righteous father. Righteous father. Okay, I, I can I mean I can talk talk about this, but he prays for two things for his disciples. Uh, for his disciples and and then the believers who would believe in his name down through uh, the timeline and he prays for two things verse 17 he prays for their sanctification john 17 17 for their holiness sanctification you see that that they be holy first thessalonians 4 3 says this is the will of god the will of god may not be that you should buy you should uh, buy a duple house uh, will of god may not be that you drive a benz car the will of God may not be many of those, many of those, but there's one thing you are sure of God that we should live a holy life. The will of God may not be that you should go to America and settle down there. You know, we have for all these things we have individual will of God. But this common will of God is all believers must be holy. Okay, then verse 21. What Jesus prayed for another thing. Synergy. What is that? I, mean, I know we have the corporate fellowship called the synergy there. But Jesus prayed for synergy among all believers. What is that? Unity. It's that they all be one. And seeing their unity, believers should, uh, the unbelievers should become Christians. But on the other hand, uh, when we try to witness to unbelievers, they often ask, what is this uh, Catholic, Protestant, Pentecostal? Actually, shame on us. And even when I began G4 mission, I was very careful that I will not duplicate what others are doing so very well. For, for example, uh, I I was very sure that God was not calling me to be pastors who a pastor would steal people from other churches and start a fresh church. Definitely, that's not my call. You know, God had called God. God gave a very specific call for me to be an evangelist or to revive people who are existing already there in the church by teaching God's word to them in a in a learned way, interesting way, in a refreshing way. You know. Uh, most of our church growth is because of division, not because of multiplication. Okay, I won't get into that. Okay, so long prayer recording book of John. Okay, next, uh, next letter, exaggerated reports. Now look at John 21 verse 11. Okay, John, uh, exaggerated reports, decrying book of John. In fact, when we, uh, we have a lot of ministries and I, I also, when, when I do this Bible study, I'm not only talking to believers, I'm also looking at potential, many of you who are potentially getting into full-time ministry or doing ministry in various ways and i'm happy uh, and uh, ministry is reporting ministry okay reporting what ministry you do how do we report okay so uh do we uh, so maybe is it like for example let's say uh around 100 people come for your meeting uh, about 500 people came to the meeting now i have a friend of mine who lives in a uh, in a country which is not in india and he talked about a leading evangelist who had a meeting there. And he said, I was there in the meeting. And then I also got the magazine, uh, which was reporting that meeting, magazine, uh, report, reporting that very meeting I was part of. And he said, there's no connection between the report and then what happened at the meeting. So that is an evangelistic report. Elastic means 100 people becomes 500. Evangelistic report. Now we, we, but wh how does John report? Look at... John 21 11 21 Simon 1 Peter climbed into the boat he dragged the net to the to shore okay it was full of large fish um, there were 153 of how many fish 153 now even when we when we try to report uh, what happens in our uh, in our small group in, in our bible study i don't want to give wrong impressions to people that even 50 people came in fact uh, or 100 people came if 12 people came 
Now, I would like to put it as 12 people. Small things, but speaks volumes, big things about your integrity level. In, in fact, in your company, now you work on a boss and you come boss asks for a report of what you did. Don't give elastic reports. Be truthful. Be honest. Be honest. Okay, then the next letter. J. 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 John 316 recording book of John. Do you know the most translated sentence in the entire planet? It's John 316. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The most translated sentence in the entire globe. John had the privilege of writing it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the key word there? I would say believes is a key word. The key word is believes. The key word is believes. Now, believes in who? Not believe in whatever you like. That's what the world says. It doesn't matter what you believe in X, Y or Z. Some God you believe. Be sincere. No. Whoever believes in him. So belief should be in the right person. You want to take the treaties and trust No, no. Uh, you know what? Uh, you know what? Something terrible happened on December 16, 2012. You know, uh, 9 o'clock in the night, 9 30 in the night, uh, a plush bus, and then the bus door opens. It's, it's, uh, and then a young man cries out. And the young man cries out. Is, uh, he says, Palam Mord, Dwarka, Palam Mord, Dwarka. That's what he cried out. And then a, a girl and a boy were there waiting. And they watched the movie and they were waiting. So what did, what did they hear? Palam Mord and Dwarka. And both of them sincerely believed if they got into the bus, they will go to Palam Mord or Dwarka. They sincerely believed. And they got into the bus. And the girl was raped by the six men or five men in that bus. Brutally raped. She sincerely believed she got into that bus with that with the boy that she was in, that she would actually go to that destination. I don't know whether she lived in Dwarka or Palamore. But something else waited for her. Now, if people tell you it doesn't matter what you believe, as long as you're sincere, narrate to them the story. What you believe in, who you believe in. You must ask yourself, what I'm believing, is it true? No, the girl, it may have helped. I, I know, I'm just, uh, uh, I'm just looking back. Nothing can be done now. Is this, are these guys really genuine? Will this bus really take me to Palo mode? So, if, so many people can say, okay, uh, you follow my religion, I'll, I, you'll come to heaven. You must ask yourself, if I follow this religion, will I really go to heaven? Is, this, is there some veracity in this claim? So belief in Jesus is a central focal point of the book of John. In fact, uh, uh, again and again, let's read the last verse, John chapter 20 and verse 31. Uh, the last verse of John chapter 20. Why was this gospel written? Why was this gospel written? What was the purpose? Jesus' disciples saw him do many other miracles besides the ones okay. told about in this book. But these are recorded so that you will believe. These are recorded so that you will believe, believe. that he is the Messiah. You will believe that he is the Messiah. Messiah. The Son of God. Okay. And that believing in him, you will have life. Okay. Okay. So this gospel is written to you. You will not believe in not X, Y, Z. Uh, but you need to believe only in Jesus. Okay. The subject of belief is also very important. Okay. The next letter. Yes. S. E. e. Okay. Exact time for God to act. God has got an exact time to act. Uh, uh, John chapter 2 verse 4 and then it's there in 7th chapter verse 6. 8th uh, chapter verse 20. But John 2 4 is very familiar. Okay. What is that story? John chapter 2. What's the story I there? I can't help you now. I said, can't help you now. Jesus tells his woman. Uh, tells his mother. It isn't my time for miracles. miracles. In fact, the same thing, a similar thing is there in the 7th chapter verse 6 and the 8th chapter verse 20. So Jesus talks, often says, my time has not come. And this is something I want you to remember, young people. You know, young, we, we would like, uh, we are the Abhi now generation. What's that? Abhi. Abhi. Abhi Chai. Pepsi's logo. And we watch IPL. They're the main sponsors for 
IPL 6 and it's there in every time. Abhi, now. They want to have Abhi. So sex before marriage. Abhi. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, that's why we have fast food restaurants. Abhi. Fast food. Okay. Instant coffee. Okay. Uh, then when we go to a, uh, 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 you go into a uh, beauty product shop and then we ask, now if I apply this cream, okay, if he says it, it's going to, madam, if you apply this cream for 50 years, then your skin will improve. You don't know, you're not interested. If he says one week, <laughs> one week if you apply, madam, your skin will, skin tone will improve. Then you want to buy that. Abhi, it's, uh, we are, belong to the Abhi generation. Now, yes, Abhi works fine. As long as it's coming, it's repenting from sin and coming to Jesus. Okay, we need to do that Abhi. But many other things we need to wait. Life partner search. No. You need to, some guy from America has proposed to you, you know, do, do a background check. Do a background check. Take time. Don't rush into things. Don't rush into things. Okay. Now, uh, then uh, a miracle. You're married. No children. Now, God has got a time for everything. Now, we go to a doctor who had a who had a baby in the 16th year of our marriage. I mean, God has a time for everything. Uh, marriage, baby, own house. We've been praying to God for our own house. It's not happened. We, sometimes some of our relatives get a little tense. Uh, some, my mom sometimes tells me, when you were one year old, daddy bought our own house. But I say, my God has got his own clock. The right time, right time. Maybe going to the going to some country. You, if it is God's will, you'll go there. That's that's true. But and in God's time, in God's time. Okay, exact time, exact time for God to act. Teaching Book of John. Okay, the next letter S. Slave role performing Jesus, presenting Book of John. John chapter thirteen. It's very familiar passage. What do you do? Jesus doing John chapter thirteen. He got up, wrapped himself in a towel, he, he took off his formal clothes, his coat to suit, to boot, to tie, everything he got, wrapped a towel and started cleaning the feet of his disciples. And that culture, that job was reserved only for the slaves, the meanest of slaves. Because they walked, they didn't have a concrete cement roads, all dusty roads. So when now people went out, the feet got dusty. They didn't have uh, Fila or Puma, or Nike at that time. Even no good quality shoes. They had sandals, and so sandals had a lot of holes, and the feet used to get dusty. So the slaves would wash, and that that role performed by a slave, Jesus performed. Why? And when did he do it? At the end of his life and ministry. After three years of ministry. So that's very important. In fact, sometimes when we start out, you know, uh, you just finished your college and you, you don't have any job and you, you go to the interview and you go to a guy, whatever job you give, sir, I will do. Any job, sir. I was like that. In fact, when I finished, uh, when I finished my uh, college, it was, an, uh, uh, our session was running late. August, I finished. I went to Chennai. I, I already decided to go to Bible college. That is only next May. But six months, I didn't want to be at home. So I went to Chennai. I, I walked into every walk-in possible. I, uh, for one day, I was selling something. I forgot what I sold. Like maybe I was selling pages. They had pages those days. Okay, where you receive SMSs. Okay, I was selling pages. Then I went and sold uh, uh, cell phones. Uh, when I sold cell phones, the rate was one minute. was for 16 rupees. That was the call, call rate. I was used. That, that was my attitude. Whatever is of it. But I want to tell you something. Uh, for the glory of God, even now, when I run, when I when I do G formation ministry, I, uh, uh, I I do things, and I pack I pack some of the things that we need to courier to some of our friends. I go to the post office to uh, and stand in the queue for doing speed posts, and uh, you know th these are things that I do. Why? Jesus is my role model. He at the end of his ministry he was humble, as he was humble at the beginning of his ministry. In fact, that is one great thing about Billy Graham as well. Billy Graham, when he started out as a preacher, as a young preacher in his early 30s, he had a song leader called, song soloist called George Beverly Shah. So Billy Graham would say, people don't hear, come to, to these meetings to hear me preach, but to hear George Beverly Shah sing. 
and then he became the preacher who preached the maximum number of people in entire history at the, after 30, 40, 50 years of public ministry. And then he writes his autobiography and he says, uh, I want to ask God one question when I get to heaven. Why did you choose a farm boy from North Carolina to preach to so many people? You could have chosen somebody else. Maybe Ravi Zacharias was more eloquent. Maybe you could have chosen, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a theologian. Clark Pinnock was a, was a famous theologian. Howard Marshall, another famous theologian. No, wh wh why did he choose me? That humility Jesus wanted them to have throughout. Yeah, Amos also should ask the same question. Yes, Amos? Should also. Okay, okay. All right, now the next letter. Okay, you. Ulta order present in the book of John. Ulta order in the sense. Now, Jesus took down the, went to the temple and he destroyed. Destroyed what was happening there, right? The uh, the money changes and all that. That is there at the end, uh, end of the other gospel. Matthew, Mark and the other in, in the synoptic gospels that account comes at the end but in in john's gospel it comes right at the second chapter so some some people say jesus did that twice once at the beginning of the ministry and once at the yeah. end of his ministry we don't know what is the truth but uh, but the order is changed here maybe why uh, why does john begin bring it up at, at the early stage why did what is jesus doing he's going to the temple and he's making these uh, changes and he's he's sort of saying he's sort of saying through this act that i am the real temple ad 70 the temple jerusalem was destroyed by by one of the roman rulers so the people who are jewish people are feeling very bad no temple no temple jesus is basically saying you don't have to worry for a building i am the new temple and you are all temples yourself. You're the, your body is the temple of the Holy, Holy Spirit. So uh, to emphasize that and to present himself the new temple, perhaps that order is made ulta here in the book of John. Okay, another, okay. Yes. S. Sent one, often talking about book of John. Sent one. John 3.17. Can you read that please? And then it's there again and again. You'll find that in my... Uh, on my notes, John three seven. God did not send His Son into the world to condemn God, it. Jesus is what God sent. Okay, when I did the introduction, I talked about it. Now, you are, in fact, uh, you are you are not basically born. None of us are really born. We are all sent. We are all sent by the Father to do a work. God sent you into that corporate company so that you'll be a witness there in that corporate company. God sent you into that college so that you'll be a witness for Jesus in that college. Now, when I went to Allahabad, you know, uh, living in Velour in Tamil Nadu, when I went 2,000 kilometers north, I saw myself as a student missionary sent by Jesus there. So that's why I ran Bible studies for two people sometimes in hostel rooms. And then we hired cycles and we went to nearby colleges and held Bible studies in other colleges as well as part of the EU EGF ministries, which I was an active volunteer for at that time. Why? I'm sent there for a job. Okay, the next letter. L. L. Loftier purpose for sickness offering book of John. Loftier, higher. Okay, John chapter 9. Shall you just read the, the first two verses? It's a very As important one. walking along, he saw a man blind from birth. What does Jesus see? Whom does Jesus see? Man a man blind. blind, born blind. Okay. Master, his disciples asked him, Master, why is this man born blind? Why is this man born blind? Was it a result of his own sins or those of his parents? Okay. Neither Jesus answered, but to demonstrate the power of God. Why was he blind? To demonstrate the power. To demonstrate the power of God. You know, when people are born with deformities and when some, some dumb disease strikes you, it could be for a loftier purpose. What is the loftier purpose? For the glory of God to shown in you. You know, I know there are some Bible teachers who tell us it is a sin that if you have a disease in your body. No, John 9 says, teaches, okay, even God can use the disease that you have as a means to bring Him glory. As a means to bring Him glory. There's a loftier purpose for that. Okay, oh, Outrageous claims of Christ presenting book of John. Outrageous claims. Outrageous claims. Now, shall we... Uh, Jesus made some 
outrageous claims. For example, read John chapter John chapter 5 verse 27. This is just one outrageous claim that he made in the book of John. John 5 27. Uh, and the Father has given him the authority. The Father has given Jesus the authority. To judge. This is because he is the son of man. So Jesus is going to judge everybody. One day, everyone from, everyone, as I say, from Malaka Sharabat to Baron Singh, Shakavat, Bill Clinton to Bill Gates, Steve Jobs to Stephen Smith of Pune Warriors, everybody. All one of, every one of us have to stand before Jesus and give account. He made some outrageous claims that he's going to judge the world. Now, not only that, he, he backed his outrageous claims through a sinless life. Okay, not only claim through a sinless life. It is in this gospel, he, Jesus says, I think in chapter, chapter 12, he says, here comes the prince of the world and he has nothing with me. None of us can say that. The devil has nothing to do with me. He, the devil cannot impact me or make me sin or bring any sin to my life. Absolutely sinless. So, there's no one in the entire planet, no one in the whole white planet like Jesus in this area. All, so the world is divided into sinners and the sinless one. Jesus is the only sinless one on the, all the rest of us, all the rest are sinners. Okay. Now, the next word, next letter. Veritas, okay, V. Okay, veritas is a is a, 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 a word for truth. Verita, veritas, witness, assembling book of John. The book of John presents witnesses mm. to the veritas. What is veritas? V-E-R-I-T-A-S. This is a term sometimes Zacharias uses. They have, some, they have something called the veritas series. Truth. Okay, John the Baptist is a witness to the truth of Jesus. Nathaniel is a witness. Peter is a witness. Martha, the first woman witness of Jesus. Okay, uh, then Thomas, okay, John the beloved Jesus and uh, beloved witness. Jesus himself is a witness. And not only that, the scriptures are a witness. John 5.39, can you read that? John 5.39, so many witnesses to the veritas, the truth about Jesus. John 5.39, you, you, you search the scriptures because in them you think you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness to me. The scriptures, Jesus says, bear witness. In Genesis, Genesis bears witness to Jesus. He's the seed of the woman. In Exodus, he's the bears witness to Jesus. He's the Passover lamb. Daniel bears witness to Jesus. He's the fourth man in the furnace. The book of Psalms bears witness to Jesus. Jesus is the good shepherd who is willing to lay down his life for his sheep. Okay. Uh, now, you can go on and on. In Zacharias, in the book of Zechariah, he's the one who was, who was pierced. So every Bible book bears witness to Jesus and all these characters. We don't have time to go into all that. Nathaniel, John the Baptist, Peter, Martha, Thomas. And so all these were witnesses of Jesus. So, uh, uh, and then the next letter. Okay, eschaton is another uh, theological word. Eschaton preponed uh, John's gospel. Uh, Eschaton prepon theology present in the book of John. Eschaton prepon. Okay, I, I'll, I'll we'll just read one verse and we'll understand this. John 5 24. What is eschaton prepon? John 5 24. Uh, I say in particular that anyone who listens to my message and believes in God who sent me okay. has eternal life. Has eternal life. That is past tense or present continuous sense. Has already passed from death to life. That is one word it says. John 5.24 and the same thing is there in 6.47, 3.18, 3.36, 4.23 and so many verses. John 10.10, I have come that you might have life, not you will have life, you already have. Which means you don't have to die to get to heaven. In fact, there is a little heaven, but you can have heaven on earth. You can have, you don't have to die to get peace, but the peace that passeth understanding, Jesus already gives you in this life. You don't have to die to go to heaven to experience healing. Okay, as some, some extreme people say that as well. All uh, uh, healing only, to experience healing, you have to only go to, okay. Uh, we also experience first fruits. Some outstanding miracles that we have As I said, this, this bike, you know, getting a bike 
That's all. Nothing sort of a miracle. A survival of a ministry like us, okay, evangelistic ministry. We are not a church-based ministry where you now we have the facility to receive offerings every week. But we are faith-based ministry. The very survival of us seven years, miracle. We believe in outstanding miracle. You know, so all these miracles, the blessings. We all, uh, the, the, the theology, in fact, Paul modifies it better. Paul uses the word in, John, in Romans 8, first fruits. And then the John says, this is how John puts it. You already have passed from death to life, which means, so it's not that we'll get all the blessings only in heaven, but some of that eschaton is already, we can experience it now. We can experience it now. Will we, okay, will you get to a point of perfect sinlessness? No. None of us can be perfectly sinless but we can experience the first fruits of that year which means now present day reality uh, present day life we can still have victory over sin and we can we should as our pastor said today we should have short accounts with God that's a good phrase short accounts with God so we can have day-to-day -day victory we will not be perfect but we can have day-to-day -day victory we can have first fruits so we can transport this into every aspect of our Christian life and behavior and then finally what's the word Decide. decide about okay the last word is D decide okay. about Jesus yeah loved disciple Jesus loved we are using that acronym and the last letter of this acronym is D decide about Jesus John's gospel you are asked to decide about this thing either you choose to choose light or darkness love or hatred from a you belong to above or below. You belong to the devil or God the Father above. Life or death. Freedom or slavery. In John's Gospel, we read the famous statement. We see that in many of the church banners. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. So you can believe lies and still stand as a slave to the devil or believe the truth and experience freedom. The love of God and the wrath of God. Truth and falsehood. Okay, now you need to choose. Especially choose you need to choose. Now, I want you to read John chapter 3. Uh, John chapter 3, verses 15, 16. John 15, 3, 15, I believe. 15, 16, and 17. Then everyone who, believe, who, who believes in him okay, can believes in live him. with believes in him. Okay. Can live with God forever. Okay. God loved the world so much that he gave his only, uh, one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will Hi, okay, life. now in the third chapter, I'm looking for a place where it says, uh, you know, where it says men did not want to come to the light, but they loved, they loved darkness and they wanted to stay in darkness. It's there in the third chapter. Are you able to find yeah. it? Yes. 20th verse. 20th verse, yes. John 3.20. They hated the heavenly light. They hated the light. Because they wanted to sin in the darkness. They wanted to sin in the darkness. They stayed away from the light. Okay. For fear, their sins would be exposed and they would be punished. Okay. Now, uh, Akinani Nageshwara is not a believer in Jesus Christ, but there was a time when he tried to shine the light. Okay, I'm just using relative terms. He's not a believer, but I'm just trying to make a point here. He tried to shine the light in Son Nagarjuna's life. What did he? He said, uh, now and then. He's this is a, a interview uh, which I think he. Uh, gave recently to the Times of India group. Now and then I watch my son Nagarjuna's films and see that some some of the stuff is vulgar. And I asked Nagarjuna about it. So he's trying to train the lights. Some light, okay. Okay, son, what you do? The movies here, some of the things that you do in your mouth, movies are vulgar. So he's asking, father is asking the son, shining the light. Okay. He told me, this is what Nagarjuna replied. Dad, you don't know these modern films. In fact, you don't even know what's happening in other films these days. They show worse things. I am better off. I have to do these things if I have to be in the business and fight competition. So, Nagarjuna preferred to stay in the dark rather than come to the light. I have to do these things if I have to be in the business and fight competition. Now, I don't know, forget about Nagarjuna and forget about Nagarjuna's dad. What about your life? Now, you need to decide whether to come to the light or stay in the darkness. That choice is there. I just want you to close your eyes. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. We'll just spend a few minutes in prayer. We'll be done by 8.15. We'll be done by 8.15.
but I just want you to take take time. We have summarized the message of the book of John. The book of John we have summarized. It was written by a man named a man man whom who called himself the one Jesus loved, disciple whom Jesus loved. So we use the phrase disciple Jesus loved. That phrase we use that 18 letters I believe in that acronym summarize this message. But the final question is do you want to remain in the light? Do you want to be in the do you want to enter the be in the light or stay in the darkness? Is there any darkness in your life? Any area of your life where you're not walking according to the light? Light, this is the light of God, the word of God. Jesus is the light. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet. Jesus is the light of the world. So anything in our life which is contrary to the written word of God or the or the or the, or the character of Jesus Christ. Anything in our life which is contrary to the written word of God or, or a disgrace to the character of Jesus Christ. If we if we you now excuse it, it could be things like you know, it could be telling lies, it could be you know anything. You now I want the Holy Spirit to speak to you. I don't want to give even give suggestions here. You know what staying in darkness means. And God is speaking to you through this Bible study. God is speaking to me through this Bible study. Decide, decide, decide. You want to stay in the light or darkness? Decide you want life or death? Decide you want the love of God or when you are stubborn, you know, when we stay stubborn. It is in John's Gospel. Some of you read my Facebook post about this. It's in, it's in John's Gospel. Jesus tells Judas, what you're about to do, do quickly. Which means when we deliberately do things contrary to the written word of God on in any area of our life when we want to deliberately do it when we choose to do it Jesus will come and say what you're about to do do quickly which means you have used your free will to sin against me I gave you first chance second chance third chance but if you're stubborn I'm going to come and look at you and say what you're about to do do quickly and then the end of that road for Judas was a burning burning hell eternal hell and that will be the end for our life if we choose to behave like Judas. Judas chose the darkness. And again, I believe it's in this same gospel where it says Judas went out and darkness fell. Judas chose darkness. What would you choose? What would you choose? Gracious Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for this hour or so we spent in studying the highlights of the book of John, the glorious gospel of John. We thank you for the truths that we have learned. Lord, today we decide in your presence that we will not choose darkness, but we will choose light. And you are the light of the world. And we will go out to the world, O oh Lord, a needy world, a world which believes sincerity is enough. The world which believes, which believes you can believe in anything you want as long as you're sincere. But it's a wrong idea, wrong belief. We, we, Lord, I pray that you'll energize us, fill us with your spirit, which the book of John talks about, the Holy Spirit. Fill us with your spirit, this comforter, the Holy Spirit, who will come along with us, even as we witness about Jesus to our friends in the corporate office, to our friends, to our friends in, the, in, the, in, the, in our colleges, in our neighborhood. Let the Holy Spirit come with us as we Go and boldly witness to rescue those who are still in darkness and bring them to the marvelous light. Lord, your word says that we can experience in the book of John, we can experience first fruits of the great blessings even on this side of eternity, O oh Lord. Lord, we have people right here with needs, O oh Master, with a need for a miracle, O oh Lord. People looking to you for, the, for a blessing, Lord, of, of a child. People looking to you for a blessing of a uh, oh Lord, of a life partner. People looking through you for a blessing of uh, that thing which they're not even able to share, oh Lord. Lord, uh, people looking to you for, a, a, a Lord, deliverance from bad habits. Lord, things that are they're, that's keeping them from bondage. Lord, right now, I pray, Lord Jesus, right now I pray, Lord, that you will come down and you will graciously work a miracle, oh Lord. Lord, nothing is impossible for you. In the book of John, uh, Lord, we read that how you went to Lazarus, his grave and he spoke the word Lazarus come out 
and the dead body of Lazarus stinking in the grave for four days came out Lord in the book of John we read about a man who was a was with a, a paralytic for 38 years 38 years facing the same problem but you change the situation in an instant oh Lord Lord I believe you can come down right now Lord and you can meet people at the point of the need and do a miracle oh Lord we believe and I believe you're going to do that Lord and we believe we are going to experience the first fruits of these glorious blessings that we have right here and now according to your will oh master we thank you we thank you for this time and even as we fellowship and even as we lord lord maybe have some questions and answers i pray that you will make those times meaningful and enjoyable we ask all this with thanksgiving in jesus matchless name amen god bless